Oh, the video. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we have three papers in this session. Uh, it's about uh, streaming, and um, uh, we have uh, you know different uh, types of uh, diff uh, topics this afternoon. So the first talk is uh, 3D mesh preview streaming. Uh, the speaker is Shen Hong from National University of Singapore. So we'll start. Uh, hello, my name is Shan Hong. I'm a PhD student from uh, National University of Singapore. Uh, I will present the paper 3D Mesh Previous Streaming. And this paper is a joint work of research group from National University of Singapore and University of Toulouse. Uh, I would like to express my thanks to my co authors, uh, Wilson, Axel, Geraldine, and Vincent. First, I will introduce the background on 3D preview streaming and what's uh, 3D preview streaming. Thanks to 3D uh, modeling techniques, high-resolution 3D models has become more and more popular. But sharing these high-resolution 3D models over the internet is challenging. Let's see a scenario online 3D model expedition. In this expedition, the user can preview, download, <coughs> interact with and print the high-resolution 3D models. But for high-resolution 3D models uh, in particular, the users need to quickly preview the models before downloading it because the download would take a long time. There are two typical ways to quickly uh, preview a 3D model. The most common way is uh, image-based uh, preview. That shows a set of representative views about the model. Here we call the representati representative views uh, as key views. But image-based preview has limitations in making continuous impressions about the model. Another advantage way is uh, video-based preview that shows a video recorded from a moving virtual camera that navigates a path through the key views. Uh, we can see uh, examples in this website, and this is image-based preview. Uh, it shows a set of thumbnail image. And this one is a video-based uh, preview that shows uh, cameras moving around the lion model. We propose a third approach called preview streaming for mesh-based 3D object. Uh, streaming and previewing the visible parts of a mesh along a virtual camera path. In other words, the client, uh, the users can render and preview the models while downloading it at the same time. We can see in the figure at the server side, we can see a Lucy mesh and its uh, virtual camera path. The key views are marked as small black squares. Then the server will stream a visible path of a mesh along this camera path, and then the client can uh, receive this uh, visible path and reconstruct the mesh and render the each viewpoint on the path. And then in this way, the users can play back the preview. Uh, 3D preview streaming has several advantages. The first one is that 3D primitive, uh, for example, vertex uh, polygons are <coughs> downloaded during the preview. It means the previewing and the downloading happens at the same time. If the users want to download a 3D model after watching the preview, uh, parts of the mesh has been already downloaded and can be reused. Additionally, uh, because the 3D rendering is done at the client side, so the users can change the rendering parameters during the preview. Uh, in these videos, In, in this video, we can see the user change the colors materials during the preview. The second advantage is that 3D preview streaming can better adapt visual quality to low bandwidth. The video shows the comparisons uh, between the video's based preview and 3D based preview. We can see the uh, in the video's based preview, the blogging artifacts are visible in the screen, and some details on the mesh surface are lost. But in the 3D based preview, the screen is clear, and 
the details are visible and refined. Uh, now we, uh, I will introduce our uh, framework of 3D mesh preview streaming, including three parts. First, given a 3D mesh and a set of uh, key views, uh, we offline can compute a streaming aware camera path. Second, uh, the base preview streaming algorithm is presented, assuming the bandwidth is unlimited. Finally, we will consider how to handle the case when the bandwidth is limited and reduced. First, uh, we start from computing a streaming aware camera path. Uh, first, we assume a set of uh, key views is given as the input. These key views can be set manually or can be computed using the approach of a viewpoint selection. The figures are the four key views chosen for the Lucy model. Before we compute a camera path, we need to understand what's a good camera path. Normally, for most applications, a good camera path should have uh, some properties. The first one, the path needs to pass through the key views. Second, the path should travel directly and smoothly between two neighboring key views. For preview streaming, we add two more properties. To be streaming aware, the Paths to share as much data as possible between two successive key views, reducing the fluctuation in bandwidth requirements on along the camera path. And the path should be smooth enough uh, with no sudden change in the path gradient at the key views. Knowing these properties, we first uh, saw the key views and then we uh, connect this key view with a smooth curve. First, we construct a weighted graph on the key views. As the figure shows, uh, every two key views are connected with an edge with a cost. The cost function here favor, the favor visiting a neighboring key view, uh, sharing the maximum data. Then he can uh, reduce the bandwidth uh, requirement fluctuation. The problem of finding a visit order of key views to minimize the total cost is then equivalent to a traveling salesman problem. It, it is uh, MP complex, but we can use a brute force approach because we don't use too many key views in our experiments. After that, we can connect the key views with the uh, camera run splice because this is a classical model of smooth curve and is C1 uh, continuous. Now we have a uh, camera path, then we can present the basic uh, preview streaming algorithm, assuming the bandwidth is unlimited. Because the algorithm is based on view-dependent streaming of progressive mesh, we begin by uh, describing how a 3D mesh is uh, represented as progressive mesh. A 3D mesh can be uh, progressively represented by repeatedly performing the half-edge cl claps on the edge of the mesh. The simplified mesh after the clap, a sequence of clap is called the base mesh. We can attain the original mesh from the base mesh by reversing the half-edge claps using an operation called vertex split. The vertex split will uh, take a merge vert vertex and then split it into two vertex. As the right figure shows, the streaming of the progressive mesh is that uh, to transmit over the base mesh followed by a sequence of vertex splits. In a view-dependent streaming of a progressive mesh, uh, in a typical scenario, the, c uh, the user is interrupting with the mesh and then he will tell the server the current viewpoints Given this viewpoint, the servers can do some visibility culling. The three figures there shows the results of visibility culling. Then only the vertex split that are uh, that uh, split a uh, visible vertex in that viewpoint are sent it to the client. So every time once the viewpoint is changed, the client need to notify the server. 
Um, after the de description of the view dependent streaming of progressive mesh, now we need to deal with the uh, camera path. First, we need to describe the camera path into end viewpoints. Uh, to do this, we use an approximated at length uh, parameterization. Ideally, let's say uh, the viewpoint spacing is D. The time uh, for the cameras to travel the D is one unique time, uh, such as one frame time. So we can define the camera speed is D. Uh, now we have a camera path and define the camera speed. And actually, both server and client has a camera. The figure, uh, uh, both cameras travel along the same camera path. The figure in the middle shows the position of both cameras uh, on the camera path. The figure at the bottom uh, shows that the server streams only the data currently visible from its uh, camera. And the client renders uh, only the viewpoints currently visited by his camera. In this ideal, in this base algorithm, we are assuming uh, both cameras have the same constant uh, speed. Okay, in this basic preview streaming algorithm, we are assuming we are actually assuming the ideal case. First, the bandwidth is unlimited, and second, the server and the client's camera speed is constant and the same. At the very beginning, the server will send the solid uh, key views and the base mesh to the client. Then the client uh, can reconstruct the camera path and the base mesh. For each uh, viewpoint on the camera path, the server will send the visible vertex split, and then the client can uh, refine the mesh after receiving this uh, uh, vertex split. Once the client receives all the data of the one uh, viewpoint, and, in, and then the client can render this viewpoint to play back the preview. The startup delay is the time taken uh, for the client's cameras to buffer the first viewpoint. The algorithm stops uh, when, all data uh, when the data of all viewpoints on the path uh, is completely downloaded. In the ideal case, we are assuming the bandwidth is unlimited. Now we consider how to handle the case when the bandwidth is limited and reduced. We have uh, studied three basic schemes to answer the question, what should the client and the servers do when there is insufficient uh, band available bandwidth and the client cannot play by the preview in full quality or at full speed? The first obvious solution is to pause the cameras until the data of the next viewpoint is completely downloaded. But uh, this is undesirable because it will cause frequent pausing of the camera's movement. We instead consider a unique property of 3D preview streaming. Uh, because we have key views and key views are more interesting and more important than other viewpoints. So we suggest we can pause the cameras at one key view until the path to the next key view is buffered. Uh, another strategy, the second strategy is for the server to send less data to the client. Because the server's cameras can move faster and then he hit uh, the server's camera has less time to send less to send data, and then it will reduce the quality of reconstructed mesh at the client side. Uh, in this way, so we call this technique uh, reduced quality. Uh, the previous two scheme are some minor variation of well-known techniques used in the domain of video streaming. Now we propose the third scheme, uh, reduce speed uh, by slowing down. Um, we trying to slow down the playback rate by slowing down the client's camera speed. 
when the client's camera speed moves slower, actually he gives the servers more time to transfer small data, and then he actually increases the quality of the mesh. So the advantage of reduced speed is that um, he has more, uh, he has better quality, but slower uh, previous speed. There are some, uh, there are a few points uh, we want to highlight before we design a more sophisticated algorithm. First, if the bandwidth drops significantly um, for a long period of time. Uh, reduce speed will stop. We slow the cameras to stop and wait. Why reduce quality could show uh, only the base mesh, uh, which is ugly. Second, when the camera is close to a key view, reduce speed is more appropriate because reduce speed will give the users more time to appreciate the interesting region. Uh, in this in this minute. Reduced quality is not at all appropriate because he reduced the quality of interesting regions on the mesh surface. In conclusion, we need to adapt both camera speed and mesh quality, adapting to the, to the importance of viewpoints based on how close they are to the key views. So we designed a new key views aware scheme that combines all the three basic schemes and chain off between uh, speed and quality. First, we need to uh, define the importance of key view, uh, no, the importance of the viewpoints. We set once at key, we set the importance uh, one at the key views and zeros at the midpoint between two neighboring key views. For other viewpoints, we interplay the interplays between uh, one and zero. Second, we need to adapt the servers and the client's uh, camera speed. First, we need to adapt the server's camera speed to the importance of the viewpoints. For the viewpoints near the key views, the server's camera slows down naturally to have more time to transmit more data of interesting regions visible from the key views. But from the formula, we can see that this formula does not adapt it to uh, available bandwidth. So we need to further adapt the client's camera speed uh, to the available bandwidth. Since we observe that the gap between the server's cameras and the client's camera uh, will become narrow uh, due to the low bandwidth, so we can adapt the client's camera speed to this gap. Uh, so the client's camera can slow down to adapt to the available bandwidth. Uh, additionally, according to the formula, we can see that for the viewpoints near the key views, the client's camera also slows down to give the users more time to watch the interesting regions. For evaluation, uh, we use three 3D models, Asian Dragon, Time Statue, and Lucy. And these three figures shows the camera paths we use for these three models in our experiments. We also conduct uh, three experiments to evaluate the five schemes. We pick 12 key views for Lucy model and 10 key views for time schedule. And the simulation of bandwidth is roughly match the bandwidth requirement for transmitting the model so that we can observe the difference between uh, different schemes. Uh, first, we use experiments two to uh, observe the difference of uh, camera speed of the three non-trivial sch schemes. We can see that key view aware uh, is slower than reduced quality, uh, but faster than and much faster than reduced speed.
we can see the quality of uh, reduced quality is not very good and because we can see the um, unrefined artifact especially compared with the Kiwi aware but for the reduced speed actually the quality is the highest to further view the difference of mesh quality of the three non-trivial schemes, uh, we also used experiment three to show that first we compare the reduced quality and keep you aware. We can see that keep you aware has a much better quality than reduced quality. Now we compare the keep you aware and reduced speed. And although the reduced speed still has a better quality than Kiwi Aware. Uh, based on these examples, we can conclude that Kiwi Aware uh, achieved a good trade off between uh, mesh quality and camera speed. We also conduct a user study to compare uh, the five schemes. Uh, the participants are required to rank. Uh, the videos and one is the best, three is the worst. We can see in uh, from the table, the Kiwi Aware achieved the best ranking. There are some commands from the uh, user study. First, stopping the camera uh, was unacceptable. Second, reduce speed uh, was boring. Uh, the third one is the Kiwi Aware was the most convincing compromise between the mesh quality and the uh, video lens. Uh, in conclusion, 3D mesh preview streaming is a new form of continuous media transmission that contains the properties of the pro progressive mesh streaming and video streaming. Uh, in these papers, we introduce uh, basic frameworks for 3D mesh preview streaming and identify several base schemes for the uh, system to handle the uh, network variation. There are some uh, interesting problems related to 3D mesh preview streaming. Uh, the first one is how to construct a streaming friendly camera path. Ideally, the uh, data rate along the camera path uh, should be as smooth as possible. The second one is how to automatically determine the key views. Uh, we can use the approach of uh, viewpoint selection or we can improve them. Uh, this work is a first approach and can be extended to uh, other case. Thank you. Actually, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I missed it, but h how do you start? Uh, I mean, w why can't you pre-generate your sequence at the beginning and then stream it? Y is it supposed to be interactive, like the user selects the camera path and it's generated on the fly? Uh, no, off offline. Actually, we compute the camera path uh, offline on the server, and then when the um, users click on to preview this 3D object and then the camera automatically move along this path. So actually, in our case, the user does not choose a camera path. So, so why can't you just pre-generate and then stream just like a uh, use st standard streaming techni techniques? Uh, you mean interact with? Uh well, you, you pre-generate your your sequence. You don't have to yes. change the speed. You, if you have enough enough time, I'm I'm missing something. It's in your use case probably, but uh, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, you can take it offline. Uh, second question is, uh, did you compare with state of the art work? Uh, uh what do you mean uh, state of art? Yeah. Well, surely people have done that b before you. So, or similar things. Uh, this uh, I think this 3D preview streaming is some kind of a news application, and we 
combine two, uh, we combine the um, technology of 3D models preview and 3D models uh, transmission. Yeah. So. I'm I'm not a 3D expert, but I I know at least of the MPEG-4 BIFS anim frame uh, technique that could do that. I mean, you could refine your model stream with a timestamp and stream that. So, uh, I, I think you should you should have a look at the uh, yes, state yes. of the art work. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> So to, to answer the question, the, uh, you, you can't, you can't pre-compute what to send and then send it because you have to adapt to the bandwidth. Right, so that, that's the whole point of the work, which is how do you adapt to the bandwidth? No, you, you can't use adaptive streaming because uh, when, when you move along the viewpoint, uh, the view, what, what you send is not independent for indi different viewpoints. Because different viewpoints can be looking at the same thing. Yeah, it's scalable coding. Yeah, it's, it's, it's scalable coding, right? So the first two, first, first two approach, the second approach is basically you reduce the quality, which is the same as scalable coding. But here, the, the, the neat thing is that you can also adapt the speed, which is kind of like in video, you slow down the frame rate and play back in slow motion. But in the case of video streaming, it's not acceptable, but here it's perfectly normal. And this is this, as far as we know, this is the, the first work on 3D preview streaming. There are, we have done some work on 3D mesh streaming, but uh, it's interactive. So this is the one, this is the first that follows a fixed uh, camera part. Any other questions? <coughs> All right. Thanks again for the speaker. Uh, thank you.